Hi folks, I'm here in turnout.r. You'll need this R script along with the corresponding data file turnout.csv to follow along with this walkthrough. Here, our goal is to practice matching, a way of creating a balanced data set from one that's originally unbalanced if our goal is to compare a treatment condition with a control condition in a non-experimental situation. So, a few libraries we'll need. Mosaic and Tidyverse are some old friends. Match it is a new one. So if you haven't installed this from our walkthrough in class, go ahead and get that one installed over here under the packages tab. And once you've got that installed, start the video uh, right here again, and we'll go ahead and load them. So there the libraries are. Let me get my console cleared up here and we'll start with a blank slate. So let me read in the data set here. I'll just use the import data set button. It's turnout.csv. Uh, and it is here in my data directory down here under the T's. So let's open that up. Uh, this is a data set, and there is a header row on this file, so make sure to click yes here. This is a data set on the result of a get out the vote phone campaign prior to the 1998 midterm congressional elections. So this is from a voter database, and uh, this voter database contains information uh, about whether somebody received a get out the vote call, that's what GOTV call is, one indicates yes, zero indicates no, as well as whether they actually voted in the 1998 election. And the hope, at least those who run the campaigns, is that the get out the vote call increases the likelihood that somebody actually votes. But of course, we've got a lot of uh, baseline information on these people, whether they voted in the prior election, which was 1996, how many persons live in their household, how old they are, and whether they are registered with one of the two major parties, either a Democrat or a Republican. One means registered with one of those two parties, zero means not. Let's import the data set here. All right, uh, come back to the script, uh, and, and let's just kind of take a look at the, at the means here. So uh, if you just looked at the proportion of people who voted in 1998, as a function of whether they received a get out the vote call as part of this phone call campaign, you'll notice there's a big difference. Uh, you know, you might conclude that there's like a 20% impact, that there's a 20% higher chance of voting in the 1998 election among those who received the call versus among those that didn't. But of course, you gotta dig deeper here and worry about confounding. Are the people who received the call truly comparable to the people who didn't? After all, it's not as though this is a randomized controlled trial where we randomly decided for a given cohort of voters, yes, you're gonna get a call, no, you're not. They just called everybody they could. So let's just do a quick check. We'll notice, for example, that those who received the call differed in some pretty substantial ways from those that didn't. They tended to be older. So among those that received the call, their average age was 58. Those that didn't, their average age was 49, and age generally predicts the likelihood of voting in American elections. Uh, we'll notice that those who received the call, one, are about five or six percent more likely to be registered with one of the major parties, which might be an indicator of kind of greater interest in politics, more likelihood of voting in the first place, regardless of whether they received a call. And you'll also notice that those who received the call were much more likely, 17, 18 percent, to have voted in the prior election. And of course, receiving this call uh, doesn't possibly affect your behavior in the prior election. These calls were like ahead of the 98 election. And so what we're seeing here is confounding. There are systematic differences between folks that received the call and folks that didn't. And all of these differences, age, uh, you know, whether you're affiliated with a major party, whether you voted in the prior election, all obviously influence the probability that you're going to vote in the next election, which in this case was 1998. So let's use matching to take this unbalanced data set and create a balanced one. Step one here is to use the match it function to find matches. So in this match it call, we're trying to find people, some of whom are treated, that's receiving the call, some of whom are control, that's not receiving the call, and match them according to these three variables that we used up here. Age, whether they're registered with one of the two major parties, and whether or not they voted in the prior election. The data is in the turnout here, and you notice I'm picking, I'm trying to find five controls for every treatment. That's what ratio equals five means. That's because among all of the people in this database, very few of them received a call all told. Uh, and so I think I can probably find more than one match who's similar along age, party affiliation, and prior voting behavior, uh, more than one control match for every treated match. And in general, kind of the more matches you can find, uh, the less statistical noise there will be. And, you know, of course, uh, you, you can't make that too high, otherwise you're going to receive a lack of balance, uh, even in the match data set. But let's see what happens. So let's run this on line 20. 
And now uh, this is the, uh, the program looking for matches and it's found some. Let's check the balance. So we'll use that with the summary command. This uh, set of matches that we created up here, let's pass it into summary. And this gives us a big table up here. Okay, so this is showing the summary of balance for the original data set. Uh, and here are three variables, age, major party, and voted 1996. And these are exactly the differences that we pointed out up here on lines 12 through 13, that those who received the call to treat a group tended to be older, more likely to be affiliated with a major political party, and more likely, much more likely, to have voted in a prior presidential election. But let's now come down here among the matched data it looks like now those differences have disappeared because our treated group tended to skew older, more affiliated with a party, and more likely to have voted. We selected controls in the matching exercise that tended to look like that profile. Older, and you notice the ages are very close within like a few hundredths of a year. Uh, they tend to be very similar, 80, 81% major party affiliation and nearly, in fact, identical to the fourth decimal place in the likelihood of having voted in the prior presidential election. Okay, so we, we achieved our goal of creating a, a data set that was balanced, at least with respect to the observable confounders out of this original unbalanced data set. Let's now extract those match pairs and analyze only the matched pairs. So match.data takes this match up here and it actually extracts only the matching cohort right here. Okay, and now we take this turnout match data set and we fit all of our statistical analysis on that data set, the matched, the balanced data, rather than the original data set. So here, we'll fit a simple linear model for a difference here. We'll fit a model where voted 1998 is the response, receiving the dummy variable for receiving a get out the vote call is the predictor. And it's, again, key here, we're only using the matched or balanced data, not everything. Here are our coefficients. So it looks like on the matched data, there's not a 20% improvement, but there's more like an eight, 9% improvement in uh, likelihood of voting, given that you receive the get out the vote call. Uh, of course, it would be nice to get some confidence intervals here because we're talking a sample size. Well, how big is our sample size? Let's ask how many rows does our uh, turnout matched data set actually have? Looks like 1,482. So we'd expect some margin of error, some uncertainty associated with a sample that size, especially when only about a sixth of the number five matched pairs for every treated case actually receive the treatment. So we'll bootstrap here. We should really be doing more than a thousand bootstrap samples, probably 10,000 is a good starting point, but I'll do a thousand just to illustrate the process right here, just to save a little bit of time. So each time we're resampling from our matched or balanced data set, not the original data set, and now we're forming confidence intervals from that bootstrap sampling distribution. And it looks like, according to this analysis, there's our confidence interval. Of, um, we think in light of this data set, in light of this sample and this matching exercise, that the get out the vote calls improved voter turnout anywhere between about two and a half percent and about 15 percent, uh, with our best guess being the coefficient up here at about nine percent. So that's a far cry from the 20 percent improvement that we saw when we looked at the unbalanced data set. Uh, but we've done a lot better job here of adjusting for these possible confounders, age, party affiliation, and prior voting behavior. So that's an example of matching, creating a balanced data set from an unbalanced one, and then executing all your standard statistical analysis steps, whether it's a linear model or bootstrapping or a, a randomization test, whatever have you, on the matched data set rather than the full one.